rotting wood like this, always good to look for grubs. Here he is. And that's a hoo-hoo grub. And you just want to take off the head. If you don't want to eat, but all of this is fine. It's a real Maori lip delicacy. You can say it tastes like peanut butter. I love peanut butter on my toast, so I wouldn't put this on it. It's more like snot. Okay. There's no shortage of rotting wood, and that means no shortage of food. If you like grubs. Zealand South Island, in the middle of a complex series of waterfalls. I've reached a point of no return, and I've got to make a tough call. Yeah, I'm confident to jump this. Oh, jeepers. Oh. Marty, what the fuck has got it? Easy, Zebra. Did he come close to hitting the bottom then? Keep moving that. There's no time to waste, and only one way to go. Steady here. Now this is a whole nother ball game. It's like 80 foot down into shallow water. Sometimes you've got to know your limits. When you get injured in the wild, it can have massive consequences. My dad always used to say to me, if there's doubt, if there's no doubt. Just back up, find another way back or across. I've pushed my luck in here. I'm going to take my dad's advice. I'll head back upstream on dry land and try to find another way across. Let's check these two trees out. See those long, thin ones? That might well work. Come on. Mountain beach have shallow roots. Perfect for what I plan to do with them. If I can get them to topple over, they'll take me higher up that bank. The plan seems to be coming together but I'm all too aware that two small trees are all that stand between me and a 50-foot drop. Okay, moment of truth on this. Whether this thing actually works. In practice, it's not as simple as it seemed on the ground. Come on, you brute. Over you go. Here she goes. What do you know? That worked! There was a big part of me that when I was on the top was thinking, what the hell am I doing? But that worked perfectly! If it hadn't, it would have been a long way to fall. That's such a good feeling. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the ravine is behind me, but I know other obstacles will wait up ahead. There's a serious amount of rose hip around here. All of these, look. Rose hip contains over eight times more vitamin C than an orange. You can't just eat these like this. If you look inside, they've actually got these little pips. Got loads of little hairs on them. You eat that, it's really going to irritate your throat. The seeds can irritate the stomach too. Preparation is the key. Look, there's a line across the river. You see that? It's got a metal cradle on it as well. I was going to check it out. Pretty solid. That's what a lot of miners and early settlers would have used to cross these rivers without having to brave these sort of currents. And this is going to take my weight. Get those rings, that would help. Okay, though, when you use these, use the rigging lines and make some stirrups off them. Now, with my feet taking the strain, this crossing is much more achievable. No Scottish custom. Right, here we go. By shifting my weight from foot to foot, I can move my way along the wire. The further I get out, the more tired I get, and the less chance I have of escaping the river if I do fall in. Really is the ultimate nutcracker, this. At least I can take some of the weight off my hands, I can rest. I've reached the basket. Now to see if I can use it to get the rest of the way across. Mad place. Oh, God, this isn't going to budge. I can't move the rings that I've used for my sling past the basket. I might just have to hang it. I need the last little bit. 
This swirling eddy is probably the worst part of the river to be hanging over. But I've got to go for it. Oh no, this is very uncomfortable. Have a rest. Very hard to grip. Go on, love, pee pee. Well up. Good job there. This mountain range is called the Southern Alps. They only emerged in the last five million years, which makes them very young. But they rise to more than 12,000 feet. Let's get up to the ridge. The Southern Alps are still growing about a third of an inch every year. The harsh weather from the west is wearing them down at the same rate. And that makes them especially challenging. Oh, it's never easy, is it? You know, this is classic sort of terrain where it starts off quite manageable, but very easily you can get yourself into terrain where you can't go up or down. It's called getting rim rocked. It's probably worth trying to improvise some sort of rope while we're in a good position up here. That's the mountains for you. You've got to be flexible. It's a case of adapt to survive. To get a good long strand of it like this. Put a loop in the end and then just twist it. It's simple mechanics. Plating the nylon will make the rope stronger. Take an arm length of it, bring it together. You'll see what happens to it. it starts to twist on itself and that's going to be the end. And this works on multiple strands. And the more strands like this you have, the stronger it's going to be. That's getting pretty good there. I'm going to need to improvise some sort of harness. To do that, I'll measure four lengths of cord and then tie a simple overhand knot. And then what you're left with, two ends with two loops in each end. To use that cutaway handle from the parachute, that's what I'm actually going to belay off. Step into the leg loops and pull the others over your shoulders and you've got a good improvised harness. Okay. I'm tied off securely and ready to go. Just aware of the rope running over a lot of these sharp rocks. Don't want to be bouncing around too much on this. Nice and steady. With so much loose rock around, there's nowhere for me to hide if any of it comes my way. This is all horrible. Situations like this can be killers, and I'm right in the firing line. Oi! Get one of those on your head, and it's lights out. Go down at the same level. And this parachute's just jam in this ring and we're still banging that danger zone. Okay, here we go. That's the right time. I'm relieved to escape in one piece. And now I'm in one of the wettest places on earth. Nearly 400 inches of rain fall here annually. My clothes are soaking. I want to warm up. That means finding shelter. When it's raining this much, Simplicity really matters. You know, we don't want anything too complicated. If I look for a natural hollow, or will deadfall. That won't be hard to find around here. Look, look, this might work. It's fallen, but the trunk's firmly wedged against a nearby tree. You know, the problem is so much of the ground is like this, saturated with water. But all of this, a bit spongy and a bit higher, it's gonna keep me out of that water. And then look, I've got nice coverage above here. You know, it's pretty basic. Or maybe use some ferns to make some roofing. Keep the worst of the rain out of here as well. Cool, let's try that. Tree ferns are incredibly useful. The fronds help keep the water out and the dead leaves make good tinder. And their roots are a great food source. And this can then jam in there. And that's just going to give something for me to jam the fern ends into to support them. Now, have a look inside. Yeah, actually, it's quite nice and cosy in here. Protected from the rain. 
and out of the water. The only thing that can make this a bit more homely is when we get a fire going. Okay, let's do it. This is always a difficult stage for a fire, especially when it's raining. Once it starts to generate heat, it all becomes easier. The rain's still off there, which is good. The fire's are light, but I'll need bigger bits of dead wood to keep it going. Stay there. Jim, stay there. There are around 30 million of these small mammals in New Zealand. I've only got a stick as a weapon. But if I can catch this, it'll make a great meal. Good! Just got him. When he was going into that hole, look. See that? That's where he shot into. You just see the back of him. <laughs> but these guys are really considered pests in New Zealand. You know, they destroy the forest, kill birds. Good, now when I drop all that firewood. <laughs> when you're burning more than 3,000 calories a day, a meal this size is a bonus. Normally you want to skin and prepare any food away from your camp, but there's also no predators here that I need to worry about. Guts out. Just lay it on like this and cook it in the skin. It's funny, when you sit and watch something cook, it's always going to taste better at the end. Just get hungry and hungry. But having food on the fire is great for morale. Okay, it should be done. Oh, very strong taste. Kind of reminds me of rat meat. And that's not great. But it's warming, and it's nutritious. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm battered, bruised, and soaked to the skin. But it's not all bad in my rudimentary shelter. However hellish a place you're in, and I've been to a lot of them, there's always something you can do to make yourself a bit more comfortable. And you, know, you might not make it like home, but you can certainly make it feel a bit more homely. And you know, right now I'm sheltered, I'm warm and I've had something to eat. And you know what? I'm pretty happy. <laughs>